Yes, sir. So today we will be looking into the load test on decision motor. In the diagram, what you are seeing is the experimental setup. Though there are no connections shown here. Okay. So uh, this is how practically we are connecting the DC motor uh, load test arrangement, or we are uh, arranging the DC motor load test. Okay. So this is the motor, decision motor. Now for any load test in the lab, this is the arrangement. Okay. So this is decision motor. Uh, this is DC motor because there are only four terminals, two terminals for armature connection, two terminal for field connection. So this is a DC motor. Okay. This is called the flywheel connected. Okay. So this is called brake drum. Okay, this is known as brake drum or pulley or uh, sometimes it is known as flywheel also if actually flywheel the diameter of flywheel will be very large okay but uh, interchangeably we use okay so it is called as a brake drum or pulley or flywheel okay so this uh, canvas belt whatever you are looking is called belt okay generally belt to provide the tension okay or uh, mechanical load on the motor okay so these two are spring balances sometimes we use two sometimes we use one okay so these are spring balances okay uh, these two are balancing wheels Okay, these two are balancing wheels. So when I rotate this wheel, then there will be a tension created on the belt, and this spring will read that tension in terms of kilograms, that is kg. Okay, so this is the load test arrangement, and this load test on DC motor is the direct testing method because I am loading the motor directly. So this is a direct test. So if I have to show this in the form of the circuit diagram, it will be like this. So this is a motor. Okay. So this is the field winding. Sorry. So this is the supply. This is the supply switch. Plus minus V volts. Okay. And to this motor armature, a brake drum is coupled. It is connected. Uh, this is mechanically coupled. So this indicates mechanical coupling. This diagram indicates mechanical coupling. And to this we have spring balances. So this is the belt. Okay. And this is connected to a rigid support. Okay. So this metal frame, what you see, red metal frame, this is a rigid support. Okay, so these are the two spring balances. Uh, let me call this as S1 and S2. Spring balance one, spring balance two. Okay. So how we are loading the motor? See, when we load the generator, it means I should be connecting an electrical load. Okay. So that we have done by using lamp loads on transformers and generators in the previous lab. In last semester laboratory course, you people have uh, seen there that you have connected lamp load or resistive load either to a transformer or to the generator when you are we have to load the uh, those two machines. But here, as the motor is giving out the mechanical output, now I should be connecting a mechanical load. 
so the load on the motor should be mechanically arranged okay and for the laboratory testing there is no better arrangement than the brake load uh, brake drum and uh, belt arrangement or pulley and belt arrangement for the load test okay so how we are conducting the load test okay uh, that when i start the motor initially i will be keeping the load on the motor zero okay because dc shunt motor uh, we generally don't start dc shunt motor and compound motor with the load turned down on it dc series motor we start with the load on it because uh, if the speed of the motor to be controlled in dc series machine if i do not uh, turn on the load then current drawn by the armature will be zero speed will tend to infinity so to control the speed of the dc series motor i generally turn on the dc series motor with the load on it but whereas for dc shunt motor and the compound motor we don't do that as the starting torque is very low if i turn on the load on the dc shunt motor suppose if i put on the load on this and start the motor the motor may not start at all it may be a blocked rotor condition so therefore generally we don't start shunt motor and compound motors with load put on it so initially i will not be putting any load on the dc shunt motor okay so i will be turning it on then when the motor starts running uh, i will start rotating these wheels so that the tension on the belts will uh, belt will start building up tension on the belt means what there is a large amount of friction uh, uh, provided to this brake drum large amount of friction in the sense the motor wants to make the brake drum run but the belt is holding it it is not allowing it to run so this will act as a mechanical load on the motor okay mechanical load means what which will restrict the speed that is mechanical load and which will demand the torque so when i provide the tension to this belt by turning on these two wheels it will serve the two purpose it will restrict the speed and also it will demand the torque from the motor so in both the cases uh, with these two cases i can uh, say that the the motor is mechanically loaded okay if i want to increase the load i will further tight this belt go on tightening the belt go on uh, increasing the tension on the belt how much tightness is there how much tension is there is read by these two spring balances in kilograms these spring balances will give us the readings in kilograms kg okay so when i multiply that with acceleration due to gravity 9.81 that will give us in newtons the force i am applying the force on the rotor here that's it i am applying the force on the rotor i am applying the force on the rotor uh, if i don't use acceleration due to gravity then it will be in kg if i use acceleration due to gravity then it will be in newtons okay so this way i am uh, loading the motor mechanically and observing the readings then how how for how much i can load as i increase the tension on the belt it is evident the load on the motor is increasing with this motor will start drawing the large amount of line current it will start drawing the increased line current il this is ish and this is if ia okay so as the tension on the belt increases current drawn by the motor also increases so i can increase the tension on the belt or i can increase the load on the motor until the current drawn becomes equal to the rated value of the motor if you see the name plate of the motor on that it will be given what should be the operating voltage what is the class of insulation uh, what is the if it is ac what should be the frequency of operation and what is the current what is the power uh, factor what is the power rating everything will be given on the name, name plate okay so suppose in that name plate it is mentioned that the motor uh, maximum uh, current drawn by the motor is 8.6 amperes then i have to increase the load on this motor until 8.6 amperes i cannot increase beyond if i increase beyond that that conductors will start getting excess heated up because of uh, uh, increased copper losses and uh, insulation breakdown may happen so therefore never i should be operating any electrical machine uh, beyond its rated voltages and currents uh, current values okay so what we are doing here we are turning the motor on 
we are increasing the tension on the belt which will assure that there is a mechanical load connected to the uh, motor and i will be increasing that load until the motor carries uh, rated current so this is the test this is the test how exactly we are doing that we have to see in the methodology okay so is it clear what we are doing in load test yes sir okay. so method exact method what we follow in the lab that also i will give you so first i have to connect the motor as shown in the circuit diagram okay so connections are done first i have to connect connect as shown okay. then ensure that the load on the motor is zero ensure load is zero how do you ensure that the belt has no tension belt is loose completely it is loosely hanging to the spring valances okay so that is no tension on the belt that is no tension on the belt okay this is the first condition we have to observe whenever we are conducting load test on any motor i should be ensuring that the load on the motor is zero that is by keeping the tension on the belt zero the belt should be loosely hanging then uh, one point i think uh, i missed in speed control that uh, i told you that i will be telling how we can start the dc motor without three point starter or four point starter only using the rheostats that point i missed okay so we will look into that uh, after this okay then start the motor in any way either using starter or using rheostats start motor okay and adjust speed to adjust speed to rated value suppose the rated value of the speed is 1500 rpm now i have to adjust the speed to 1500 rpm at no load condition how i can do that using field rheostat using field rheostat uh, if you get the rated speed without using field rheostat then there is no need to use field rheostat we can uh, just keep quiet if the uh, speed whatever we uh, after starting the motor when we measure the speed if the speed is less than rated value then increase the field resistance which will decrease the uh, flux and increase the speed so uh, vary this field rheostat until the motor is rotated at rated speed this already we have done in generator experiments okay now once the motor starts rotating in at rated speed then start increasing the tension on the belt okay uh, then load the motor load the motor by increasing tension on the belt by increasing tension on the belt using using pulley wheels using pulley wheels so using those two pulley wheels you just increase the uh, tension on the belt okay so which will uh, assure which will uh, ensure that the mechanical mechanically the motor is loaded how it is done because when i increase the uh, tension on the belt when i when i start rotating these wheels the belt will get tightened how it will get tightened it will come in contact with the diameter of the pulley circumference of this pulley or brake drum so when i go on increasing it the friction between the brake drum and the belt increases what does it mean the belt is restricting the rotation okay then what is the work of the motor to rotate so to keep itself rotating motor starts producing more torque 
I have told in the uh, uh, what I say torque analysis that torque is not because of speed. Speed is there because of torque. Because there is torque, there is some speed. So initially, when the motor is not loaded, the torque requirement is very less. The no load torque is very less. Okay, but when I started increasing the tension on the belt, that is when I started loading the motor. The motor is now dropping its speed. The torque which is produced by the motor at no load is not now sufficient to make the rotor rotate. Then motor will draw more current from the supply and produce more current. Sorry, produce more torque. So when the torque is produced with higher values of no load uh, torque and compared to higher values of no load torque, it is it means the motor is loaded. Okay. So when motor starts drawing the current from the supply higher than no load current, it means motor is loaded. Okay. So here by using this breakdown pulley arrangement, belt arrangement, we are making the motor loaded mechanically. So what is happening? When I increase the tension, there is a friction between the brake drum and the belt, which will drop the speed. To provide the speed, the torque has to be increased. To increase the torque, current has to be drawn. Okay, so this variation is done at steps, at various steps until the rated current is reached. Okay, so uh, motor is loaded in steps. Motor is loaded in steps until until rated current is uh, drawn by the motor. Until the rated current is drawn by the motor. Uh, now we have to take the readings that and all is explained in the practical uh, session okay that i will not go in detail here we see the method that's it now with this what will happen when i increase the tension on the belt the spring balances will read something initially when the motor is on no load spring balance is zero you'll note that here when motor will When motor is on no load, spring balance shows zero. Spring balance shows zero. Because I haven't put any load on the motor, the tension on the belt is zero, so therefore the spring balance shows zero. When motor is loaded, when motor is loaded, okay, spring balance is show some readings. Spring balances uh, show some readings. So uh, we will generally take let S1 and S2 be the spring balance readings. Spring balance readings. Okay. Uh, one more thing we missed. Uh, now let the radius of brake drum i think that is not visible let radius of brake drum be r okay uh, it is it matters a lot because if the radius of red drum is more, 
torque required by the brake drum will also be more torque produced by the motor will also be low more okay because uh, radius is what force into ra radius now where the force is been produced here of the the belt is coming in contact at the bottom circumference of the uh, uh, what we say hmm. pulley okay so let this be the pulley okay and let this be the belt now the friction is happening the belt is in contact with at this point okay so now the suppose motor is rotating in clockwise direction motor is rotating in clockwise direction so there is a friction here to overcome this load the motor has to produce a force in clockwise direction now is this force tangential to the pulley or brake drum yes the and the point of contact with belt and the brake drum is here now whatever the force is produced to overcome this friction at this point the force is tangential to the brake drum or to the pulley and i have certain radius of the brake drum which is r now this is force now there is a tangential force and radius combining what we get torque t is equals to f into r so there is a torque produced okay so when this torque is increasing we say motor is loaded this is the shaft torque tsh okay because this brake drum is connected to the shaft and the force is produced at the shaft level so therefore whatever the torque is produced here at the brake drum this is tsh the shaft torque or the output torque or the useful torque okay so here let s1 and s2 be the spring balance readings then the net pull on the brake drum or net pull on the belt therefore net pull on the belt is equal to okay what so what will be the net pull will it be s1 plus s2 or s1 minus s2 am i audible yes sir yeah will it be s1 plus s2 or s1 minus s2 yes one plus s2 how come s1 minus s2 sir because both of the pulls are in the same direction Yes, yes. So it will be S one minus S two. It will not be S one plus S two. Suppose the pull is like this. Okay. Uh, let me. Here uh, there is no. And the tug of war. Okay. Suppose there is a tug of war using a rope. Person X and person Y. Now X is pulling this in this direction. Y is pulling this in right direction. If the force applied by person X and person Y is exactly the same, will the center point move? no sir yes no it will remain still is it suppose uh, some uh, cloth is connected here will there be movement from the center point if say suppose x is producing uh, one newton force y is producing one newton force no sir No, no. Now suppose x is producing two newton force and y is producing one point five newton force. In which direction the uh, center point? Direction, sir. 
in next direction what is the net pull now is it 2 plus 1.5 or 2 minus 1.5 Two minus one point five, sir. Two minus one point five. Now, instead of this straight tug off, you just do it. This is y and this is x. X is pulling up. Y is also pulling up. Let x be spring balance s one. Y be spring balance s two. Now what? S one minus S two or S one plus S two or S two minus S one? It will be difference of S one S two or addition of S one S two. Difference. Difference. Okay. Obviously difference because when it is stretched, it appears both are pulling in the opposite direction. But when it is connected to the fixed uh, rigid support, both S one and S two are pulling in upwards only. Okay, but when you stretch it and analyze, they are actually pulling in opposite direction. So therefore, my net pull on the belt is difference of two spring balances. Okay, so the net pull on the belt, let S is equals to uh, S one uh, difference S two. There is no evidence that S one is uh, always greater. Generally, what we do in practice is in practicals, whichever is showing the larger value that we take it as yes one, because pull cannot be negative. Okay, force cannot be negative, right? Force is a scalar. Sometimes, sometimes it is scalar, sometimes it is vector. Okay, force cannot be negative. I can't get negative forces. Okay, so therefore, it is yes one minus uh, yes two. Okay, so the net pull on the belt is. Uh, the difference of S1 and S2 in kg. So let S1, S2 be the spring balance readings in kg, in kilograms. Okay. Or, or net pull on the belt is S is equals to. S1 difference S2 into G acceleration due to gravity Newton meter. Uh, we know this fundamentals. Okay, when weight is multiplied with acceleration due to gravity, that becomes uh, sorry newtons, not newton newton meters. It is newtons. It will become force in newtons. So that is S1 difference S2 into 9.81 newtons okay what is the radius of the brake drum we have taken r is the radius of brake drum radius of pulley okay so here i can take here Let R be the radius of brake drum or pulley. Okay. In meters, in meters. Then the torque developed. Then the torque developed uh, at pulley or shaft. Then the torque developed at pulley or shaft is. Is T S H is equals to. Okay. It is S into R. S into R. Okay. This I can write it as uh, S one 
ಡಿಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಎಷ್ಟು ಇಂಟು ನೈನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಏಟ್ ಒನ್ ಇಂಟು ಆರ್ ಎಸ್ ಒನ್ ಇಂಟು ಎಸ್ ಟು ಇಂಟು ನೈನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಏಟ್ ಒನ್ ಇಂಟು ಆರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ನ್ಯೂಟನ್ ಮೀಟರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ನ್ಯೂಟನ್ ಮೀಟರ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಔಟ್ಪುಟ್ ಟಾರ್ಕ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟಿಕಲಿ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವ್ ಬೈ ಕನೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಆಕ್ಚುಯಲ್ ಲೋಡ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಮೋಟರ್ ಬೈ ಕನೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಆಕ್ಚುಯಲ್ ಲೋಡ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಮೋಟರ್ Uh, let n be the speed of motor in rpm rpm let n be the speed of motor in rpm then when i know the torque i can know the output power right so p out is equals to see the full load output we know because that is given on the motor nameplate only say suppose 3 kW 3.5 kW or 3 hp 2 hp 5 hp like that but we are not uh, loading the motor only at full load we are increasing the load okay uh, in steps so i want to know what is the output power of the motor developed in steps okay before the full load is reached full load is known already that is not a problem but i want to know at uh, various steps so for that i have to use this uh, torque okay at various steps the spring balances values are different so therefore the torque developed at shaft is different at various steps so p out is equals to i can write uh, 2 pi n tsh by 16 watts or p out is equals to 2 pi n okay uh, we have what is tsh s1 difference s2 uh, in the notes it is written s1 minus s2 okay for more clarity i am writing here s1 difference s2 okay uh, into 9.81 into r divided by 60 so this is my output power this is my output power okay now i got output i want efficiency so i should know input so here applied voltage is v volts and let line current be i or in the diagram if we have taken il then we will take it as il only line current be um, il okay then what is the input to the motor therefore motor input is is equals to uh, p in i can call it as p in is v into i l therefore motor efficiency eta is equals to p out by p in okay so that is eta is equals to so p out is what 2 pi n 
into S1 difference S2 into 9.81 into R divided by 60 into V into IL into 100. So this is percentage efficiency. So this equation is for efficiency of DC shunt motor. For, uh, when we conduct the load test, this equation is valid only for the load test. It is not valid for any other testing method. For other testing method, other expressions we will get. Okay. So this is all about the load test. And is it useful to go for load test all the time? The advantage is that values are accurate. Advantage is results are accurate. Okay. This is the only advantage, but disadvantage. Okay. Um, as actual load is applied, it is uneconomic for large motors. And economic for large motors because for large motors I have to arrange for larger load okay so for that uh, it becomes an economic only for the sake of testing okay uh, and uh, for large motors for large motors large power loss occurs only for testing large power loss occurs for testing so these are the disadvantages so load test one advantage is it is accurate because actual load i am providing but uh, it is uh, uh, suitable for only small motors in the lab testing and all but for large motors we can't do that so once again, we'll look back what we have done here in the load test is that I have connected the load test arrangement using the brake drum, belt and spring balance arrangement to a fixed frame. Okay, then uh, I do the connections as shown in the circuit diagram. First, I will ensure that the belt tension is zero. The tension on the belt is zero. That is motor is on no load before starting. Then once I start the motor, I check the speed. If the speed is not at its rated value, then by adjusting the field rheostat, I will be uh, taking the speed to its rated value. Okay. Once the speed is at its rated value, in steps, I start slowly increasing the tension on the belt using the pulley wheels and the spring balances will vary. And at each step, I will be noting down the spring balance readings, speed readings. Okay and the line current and input voltage readings. All will change, okay? Uh, when the load changes, line current changes, voltage will almost remain the same. The spring balances will change, okay? Speed will change. So these are the three variations. So how these will vary that you should observe. Whether the pattern of the readings are coming correctly or not, you should observe. Most of the times, practically what will happen is one spring balance will show constant value. Other spring balance will show increasing value when I go on increasing the uh, load. So the higher value spring balance, we take S1. Higher lower value spring balance, we take S2. We take difference of that. This is one observation what we have to do. Or sometimes one spring balance will vary very small. Other spring balance will vary largely. Suppose the no load value of both spring balance is zero. Obviously, it will be zero. When I increase the tension on the belt, the first value may come. Uh, one spring balance may show one kg. Second spring balance may show three kg. Okay. Then when I vary further, first uh, spring balance may still show one kg. Second spring balance may show six kg. 
When I vary third uh, step, first spring balance may show 1.5 kg, second spring balance may show around 10 kg. This is fine, no issues. There is no uh, compulsion that uh, both spring balances should increase all the time. It won't happen. Okay, but it will not decrease at any point. Once it is shown 1.5 kg in first step, in second step it will not show uh, 0.5 kg. Okay, so this is one observation. Second observation, the speed goes on decrease. As I go on increasing the speed, uh, the load, the speed goes on decreasing. Though slightly it may decrease, but it will decrease. But not largely because this is a decisioned motor. Decisioned motor is a constant speed motor. So the speed variation will not be very large, like in induction motors. Okay, so this is second observation you should do. Third observation, line current goes on increasing. So when I increase the load, motor draws more current to provide more torque to the load. Therefore, line current increases. So until this line current shows uh, a rated value, I have to increase the load. Once the line current shows rated current, we should stop loading the motor further. So spring balances increase, speed decrease, line current increase. These three are the observations. Theoretically, we say voltage will remain constant. Practically, we observe slightly the voltage will drop. If it is 220 volt DC, it may come down to 210 or 205 volts in its full load condition. So these are the observations we should do in uh, conducting this test. Once the test is conducted, we use these equations and find the efficiency of the motor. So this is all about load test on decision motor. Okay, is it clear? Any doubts in this? Yes. Yeah. If uh, no doubts are there, we'll end this session here. Third hour, uh, I will be engaging.